I think given the choice, most of us would absolutely prefer to be uh, in our homes with our families in a comfortable setting uh, when we end our lives. And hospice is a vehicle to make that happen. Hospice to me is, is death with dignity. And there comes a point, and we have this wonderful medical center that is extraordinary with keeping people and giving them new treatments and new wonderful things, but there comes a time when there is nothing more that can be done. People like to avoid death, and they don't want to think about death. It's a scary thing. But, you know, the same way that you celebrate a birth, I think you need to celebrate a death the same way, and that's what hospice allowed me to do. Hospice is living out your life comfortably, caring, being cared for by that team, and on your own terms, not having any schedules to, uh, to keep. And um, if, if you want a beer, you have a beer, you know. <laughs> Houston Hospice is a healthcare organization, and its focus is on giving compassionate care uh, and providing services to uh, end of life services. That it's not about dying, it's about living while you're here. It's about living the fullest life you can have, the most comfortable life you can have. And if a person is, has that support of hospice to help with their pain and their symptom management and help with their psychosocial support, that frees them. And the big secret about hospice is a lot of times people live longer when they go into hospice. Some of our patients live a lot longer than their doctors expected them to because we're not filling them up with too much fluid. We're not giving them all these extra medicines. We've simplified everything. And I think our bodies like that. <laughs> and I know that our minds and our hearts do. The dignity that they provided to him, he was just kept so clean. He was treated with such respect. Um, and it was everything he deserved, you know, for the life that he lived. And it was just, that's why I say it was a fabulous time. I, I, I hated losing my dad, but I loved being here. I had a friend who was dying. He had liver cancer. And uh, the place he was being treated at said, you know, you only have weeks to months to live, but you're not ready for hospice. And I said, hello, you are, I, I got to tell you this, you are ready for hospice. Weeks to months. I, do you want to be at home? Yes. He had young children. Do you want to be with the girls? Yes. I want to be able to go out with them and I want to be able to, you know, to go to their school functions and to be with them as long as I can. And I want to be in my home. I said, then hospice will support you in doing that. We found out about three months into Melinda's pregnancy that there was something wrong with Abby. And we eventually realized that she had Edwards syndrome or trisomy 18, which is a fatal chromosomal disorder. Um, she was never expected to make it through term. She wasn't expected to make it through the birth, but uh, she did. We couldn't bear to, to have her in the hospital um, most of her days, to have her hooked up and um, on machines. So we all held our breath uh, on the day that we went to the hospital to uh, have the C-section for Abby, that we would get to see her and that she would be fine. And, and uh, she was, she was born and she was strong and she cried and, and uh, but she still had Edwards syndrome and uh, we knew that she wouldn't be with us forever. So uh, the nurses and the doctors, uh, we all discussed and we realized we had to make arrangements to bring her home. They knew she was gonna make it for a while, a few days at least, and um, set us up with Houston Hospice. They said, these are the best. These are the best. Here's the phone number. Um, a nurse will be coming out in a couple hours and we'll see you guys through this. And a few hours later, um, Charlie, Charlie comes in and lights up the room. I got a call about a family who had a baby, um, which was Abby and they wanted to go home. I initially worked with, with the parents about feedings. I talked to them about what to look for when they start seeing changes in her condition. We talked about um, the support that they would have through Houston Hospice. 
I routinely made visits to, to, see the, to see Abby and to just support the family, make sure that they're doing okay. Charlie came in and, and he was, instantly we liked him and instantly we felt comfortable with him. And we knew that he cared as much about Abby as, as we did. And Abby wasn't number so-and-so and so-and-so, that trisomy 18 kid, that was our daughter. Right. And, and Charlie was there to help us. Without Charlie and without Wendy and without the doctor, I mean, what, what would we have done? And there, there are things that we asked. Um, you know, how much longer are these, are these things normal? Are, you know, we'd pick up the phone at midnight and, and call Charlie and say, you know, this is what's going on. Is this okay? Is this part of it? Is, is there something that we can do? And what would we have done? As if life wasn't hard enough, well, what would we have done if they hadn't been there to help and to give an encouraging word and to say, you know what, you guys are doing great. If we have done something different, we wouldn't have had the 12 days that we had. Mm -hmm. And the, Abby wouldn't have had the 12 days that she had. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much pain and suffering in the world. Abby had 12 days of nothing but love. She was always kissed, she was always held. She was always loved. Hospice, it's for kids too. And it allowed us the chance to bring her home in an environment where we had the tools and we had the, the medical support um, to do it in our own home. And that was a blessing. And we did get closure because on, on the 12th day when she, she left us, we knew we had done the right thing. We didn't do the easy thing, no. but we did the right thing. Right. Hospice is the best model for care that exists in our country today. The comprehensive nature of the team, supporting people in a real point in their lives when they need help, and individualizing our care for those people is a tremendous gift that we bring. And, you know, without the support of the public, we couldn't do it. The generosity, the love, the care of other people donating to the hospice is what really allows the dignity to be here. If you put Houston Hospice in front of the patient, the patient's family, uh, it's an easy choice. One of my biggest concerns is, is having the resources, the trained personnel, the quality of personnel uh, in place, uh, having the goods on the shelf to keep up with this growth. The sad fact of life is in our current environment, you, you can't pay for hospice based on what we're, we're paid by insurance companies or Medicare or the other people who, who would pay for health care services in different environments. And so uh, we absolutely depend on contributions from our community. And uh, the board is a great steward of those resources. The board of, the, of this organization is, is one of the treasures too, uh, because they are looking like eagle eyes uh, 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 with the, their incredible staff and are so careful. And it's a good place to put your money. You know you're gonna get the bang for your buck. I remember the first time I came here when I was just joining the board, I believe, and I just was so struck by the grounds, and it reminded me that these wonderful women who really started this organization started it from a garden club perspective. They viewed this institution as being something that related directly to God's beneficence with regard to nature. It's for every time you walk out of that room with someone who is in the final uh, days of their lives, you can go out to a garden and walk around these paths and feel something very special. We have to give people a choice of hospice, but we, I guess I consider Houston Hospice the gold standard of hospices. I think any support of Houston Hospice, whether it's of somebody's time or their money, is an incredible way to give to the, our community. It delves into patient care. It is a resource um, for clinicians and it's an ongoing resource for family members. 
we're just thankful. We're just thankful that they were that they were people there who cared and people there to help um, that are willing to go through that with you. And how special of a person is that? Does it take to yeah, do something like that? Because that's a that's not an easy job. We don't have the resources for that. You wouldn't know I wouldn't know who to call for that. So, you know, you have to have the money to do these things because it, it is a life changing experience to go through hospice. I'll pay thousands of dollars a day to have somebody on a ventilator in an ICU, but a hundred dollars or, or whatever to maintain somebody in their home on some pain medications and, and other symptom relieving uh, things, uh, we're not willing to do. So uh, we need to change our mindset uh, as, a, as a people to get there. Hospice care works for people. It helps them through that. They provide so much comfort and care for others that uh, it's truly a gift and a gift that needs to go on and be supported. It was a gift to our family.